This is AHL Explains. I'm Anthony Ledford and today I'll explain machine learning. Machine learning is not a single discipline. It's a hybrid discipline that borrows techniques from a range of different areas, including computer science, engineering and signal processing, mathematics and statistics, plus others. It's a very broad topic. There are very many branches to it. For example, if you pick up a book on machine learning, you'll probably find it talking about supervised and unsupervised learning, or reinforcement learning, which is something that's popular in robotics, or statistical and Bayesian machine learning, or more recently, deep learning has become very popular. All of these different techniques involve modeling and analyzing and learning from data. Some of the techniques involve probability models for uncertainty, but importantly, not all of them do. Now, in our world of systematic trading, we typically have a, something called a low signal-to-noise ratio. That means that the amount of signal we can find is very small compared to the amount of noise that we typically observe in the data. We'll see an example in a moment where understanding the uncertainty actually helps a great deal in terms of learning from the data. An important question, of course, is what is machine learning? Well, there's no simple answer to that. But as I see it, it's about algorithms that can identify and act on repeatable patterns in observed data. And importantly, those algorithms are not told what types of patterns to go and look for. They work that out for themselves. That's what distinguishes them from other areas of data modeling. OK, let's have a look at an example. And this is going to be a binary classification example. So I'm going to draw a diagram with two axes. Uh, I'm going to call those predictor 1 and predictor 2. And predictor 1 might be today's traded volume relative to a normal day. And predictor 2 might be today's momentum value. Now, if I know the values of those two predictors for today, that will define a particular point on this diagram. And I'm going to colour that point green if the market goes up tomorrow. And I'm going to colour it red if the market goes down tomorrow. And I'm going to do that for every point in my historical data set. Putting all that together, I get a pattern that looks like this. Now, what I'm trying to do is use this data to work out whether the market is likely to go up or go down for points in the plane where I don't have any data yet. Basically, it comes down to colouring the background points of this diagram, red or green, and learning that shading from what I've observed in this data. We'll have a look at doing that using a few different methods to illustrate where machine learning is different to more traditional methods. We'll start with a linear classifier. Here, the decision boundary, that is the line between the red and the green shading, is assumed to be a straight line. Fitting that straight line, we end up with this. Now this is a very simple approach, but it's also very inflexible. And in general, there is no reason to assume that a straight line is the correct form for that boundary. The next classifier we'll examine does not specify any equation for the decision boundary. So in that sense, it is our first example of a machine learning algorithm. What I'm going to do is for every pixel in the diagram, I'm going to look at its 15 nearest points and I'm going to shade that pixel red or green according to the majority of those 15 closest observations. This is a very empirical approach and it leads to a very flexible boundary, but it does not result in a very stable boundary and it also may produce isolated islands of green or red like those shown here. Now, empirical methods like this can be really useful in low-dimensional problems, but they will struggle in high-dimensional cases where there are large numbers of predictors. This is called the curse of dimensionality. And the other thing about machine learning we should say is that machine learning algorithms typically are ones that scale well as the dimensionality of the problem increases. Our third and final classifier comes from Bayesian machine learning. Now, this classifier contains an explicit probability model to represent uncertainty. But again, it makes no pre-specified assumption about the shape of the boundary. 
The calculations involved are a bit more sophisticated. They require use of Bayes' theorem. But the results of this classifier clearly offer more flexibility than the linear classifier. We don't end up with the straight line boundary. And greater power and stability compared to the empirical classifier. The boundary we end up with is much smoother and we don't have those islands sitting off it. Now this approach can also be extended to work well in high dimensional problems. To summarise what we've seen, modern machine learning tools offer an increased power and flexibility compared to traditional models and purely empirical approaches. Unfortunately with these advantages comes an increased risk of overfitting. So it's more important than ever to understand the data, the problem and the algorithm you are using and to scrutinise the results very carefully. Thanks very much.